Hi folks, this is Kevmark 1982 and welcome to my let's play of FM18 as Liverpool. So, I have played quite a few games in the sea, well in the pre-season. As you can see, I've done fairly well. I've also played one game against Watford, which I won 4-1. That's just the first game of the season. Obviously, that is a good start. Um, as you can see up here, we beat the under-23s comfortably. Olympiacos was a draw, and from there, we won every single game. The only one that really stands out to me is the... Well, sorry, two stand out. The Doncaster one that we only won 1-0. But a win is a win, even though it's a friendly. And then the match against AC Milan, where we won 4 0 quite comfortably, which is really, really good. Um, so, before the Hoffenheim game, I want to talk about a couple of things. First off, is the transfers that we've made. So, if we go to transfer history, you can see that I've brought in five players, and I've got how many? Seven players that are out whether it's a loan or completely gone from the club so first off i'll talk about the in players josip pasovic is probably butchered the name is a goalkeeper that i bought from palermo it said on the first screen he looks fairly decent he's quite slow though which i think only really matters no it doesn't it doesn't actually say whether it it matters for the sweeper keeper or the goalkeeper but obviously it's important if they can rush out and just get rid of the ball but you know is uh, he's two stars current ability and potential for four stars which would make him up there with the best of my goalkeepers i mean if he does get to four then you know you do take them take this with a pinch of salt as such but it is a good indication or can be a good indication so you know it will be you should be better than Mignolet if he reaches that full potential he's got. Next up is Matthias De Lith or Delight. This player is well known amongst anyone who's playing FM at the moment because I think everyone seems to be signing him. He's that he's that player that everyone signs on the on the FM. That one player. I mean, a few years ago it was Romero. Um, trying to think who else there is. There's quite a few different players where there was always one that everyone seemed to sign because they knew. He was going to be brilliant he popped up on my scouting information so i thought i'd take a punt at him as you can see i did buy him for 13 million he's already worth 14.25 and his current ability is two and a half with potential to reach five stars so i mean if you look at his physicals they aren't all like excellent but they are good and obviously because he's tw he's 18 oh my god i nearly said 20 for some reason because he's 18 these are going to improve so his physical can be really really good by the time he reaches his peak his mentals look fairly decent and then his technical is decent as well at least for the ones that he needs as a ball playing defender just obviously you do want marking passing as a ball playing defender to increase and tackling is 14 which is very very decent next up we have Dembele Dembele is one that is well known from previous FMs he was really really good he doesn't seem to be as or have as much potential in this year's but he is a good centre forward he's a complete forward finishing the 15 obviously you want that to improve as near to 20 as possible in a team like Liverpool but yeah, again, his physicals are really good. Uh, his mentals are decent. And everything else in the technical side of things is pretty good as well. If you look at the report, he's fourth in line. And I'm trying to get rid of Danny Ng, so he'll be third. Then we've got Jose Mauri. Jose Mauri from AC Milan. He, again, four star potential. His physicals are fairly decent. 21 so this should be possibly better than this but we need to just make sure that we try and improve them as much as possible in the reports he's shown as eighth behind even Coutinho Gruch, Gruch is um I may go back to him in a minute after we've just gone through the players that we've sold off 
Then last but not least is Stefan De Vries. He's another player that comes through on the scouting information. And I thought he is a decent player. Probably not the not the quickest in the world, but we've got like some Matip who is quick as well. So he is someone that we can rely on and look he's better than the other two that I've got in the first team. Have a look at Matip. His pace is a little bit better than Stefan De Vries. Pace and acceleration that is. And then on the flip side, on the outs, Jaria, he always seems to go, or Bolton always seems to come in for hit, for a loan for him, so it's, it's a good opportunity for him to go out and get some experience. He's not that much potential. I think in FM17 it was a lot better. Markovic, 13.5 million. It says that he's valued at 23, but I don't think I was going to get any more from for him. Then there is Benny, Benny Woodburn, he's also gone to Bolton, he's valued at 3.1 million and his potential is 4 stars, obviously in FM17 it was 5 stars, it could obviously grow because again things can change. Bogdan, I was quite happy with getting a potential 3.5 million for him from Zenit St. Petersburg. Then we've got Juanma, he is not... Or he wouldn't sign a new contract, so I thought I'll send him out on loan. I think I have like a potential fee in there for him, so hopefully we'll do one. <laughs> to put it mildly, Matthew Virtue is the same. It's worth about one hundred and sixty thousand, one fifty-five. Just trying to get rid of him as well. I mean, he could go up to three stars, which is a decent rating for the senior team. So yeah, it's one of those that you know. You want to spend a lot of time on a player like Matthew Virtue, who hasn't got a lot of potential to just get him to a middle of the road level and sell him off for not so much money, or do you want to get someone in or get a like a um, a youth prospect to come through who's a lot who's got a lot more potential? And you know, it's that kind of decision making that maybe. Um, Maybe go down the line of get rid of Matthew Virtue. John Flanagan, he's aging at the moment. I don't think he's got a chance really, or he didn't have a chance of getting really um, any better, should we say. Well, maybe he did. But at 24, he's not going to like reach that potential that is there. So I thought I would take the chance of getting rid of him. Nine and a half million for someone who's just been at the club for eight years or whatever it is. Or not almost nine years is uh is good i think it's good business i think you know there are better players in the team that we could go for and talking of the let's just have a look at, quickly look at the squad see see that it's going to be just a normal pretty much the normal teams after the ones that i've just mentioned the players that you as you can see the potential players that i've got in my main squad i had to promote alexander arnold and i th think grujic or gruic i don't know how you want to pronounce it but yeah i th think i had to promote him but between the light the licht i don't know alexander arnold and gruic they are our three players with the most potential in the team so hopefully we can see them develop into a, you know, into the, the future for Liverpool. Along with, obviously, Gomez and Solanke. I think Solanke is, uh, he's looking really good. His um, his physicals are really good for a 19-year-old. His finishing is quite poor for a centre-forward, but hopefully over time that can, that can get better. And... Then let me see under 23s just same view potential we've got maori he's one of the guys who brought in ryan or rian brewster he's someone who can play up front and then also across the um attacking field uh, no one else really of note i don't know actually i've obviously made them available for the the 23s i'm trying to get rid of james miller because he's he's on so much money He's on £140,000 per week, which is a lot of money. 
and he's valued at 21.5 million at the age of 31. So I want to get rid of him. Whether I'm going to get 21.5 million is another thing. I don't think I am. Let's just see his transfer status. Oh, yeah, at Brighton, I've asked for a loan, and I think I stuck a, I don't know, 15 million or something, or 12.5 million, something asking price for after 20 games played. So hopefully, if he plays 20 games, He's going to go to Brighton for twelve and a half million, which I think is good business for a thirty-one year old. Then let's have a look at the under eighteens to see if there's anyone else. Obviously there's a few with three and a half star potential, which is really good. You've got Glatzel, Jones and Tagseth. It's just one of those things that will they make it? I mean they're only sixteen, so they could get even better. It just all depends on things. So one of the new features of FM18 is Dynamics. This is something else that wants to just quickly gloss over. So the overview just gives you some information. Match cohesion is average, but it says that the players are blending well together. The team's collective mental state has seen a slight improvement. So that's good. You know, people are getting happier. Hopefully that can you know, be shown on the pitch and we score lots of goals and could see it as few as possible. But you never know. It'll generally improve player position and during matches. So that is something that is really key, especially, you know, if I'm playing quite a high pressing game. So hopefully those kinds of things where, you know, their position is, is going to help. Then slight improvement to the vision and reactions to events unfolding when playing. So I think that works both ways, whether you're defending or attacking. Obviously you want this to be as high as possible. Then we've got dressing room atmosphere is very good. That's something that, uh, you know, <laughs> that's something that you've got to keep an eye on always in the FM games. So Liverpool's recent form, one, when got one. But, uh, you know, it's all positive and all positive. Managerial support, this is, ooh, I'm failing to positively influence a number of players. So this like to have clicked on it to see what players it is. I've probably upset you know, Milner because I'm getting rid of him. Maybe that's had a knock-on effect because of something that I'll show you in a couple of seconds. So then you say top influencers, you see team leader and team leader, Lalana and Henderson. It goes a hierarchy. As you can see here, this shows you who like the from the top down who are the most influential players in the in the squad, including myself, obviously, because I'm the top dog, as they say. And then we've got team leaders of Henderson, Lalana and Milner. So talking around the Milner saga or the Mil Milner sale, potential sale, is the fact that because he's a team leader, he has a lot of influence over the players underneath him. So you know, it can really upset the balance of your squad. Hopefully it won't. Hopefully they'll understand I'm getting rid of him because I've got other players that I can play in the same positions. And obviously at 31 on those wages, I just want to get rid. Cut the wage bill. Liverpool's wage budget isn't the best, but it's not the worst on the same token. It's just the fact that he's on so much money. Then you have your highly influential players. So these are normally players that are make up the core part of your first team, like Coutinho, Klein, Mignolet, Emery, Chan, etc. Influential players are other players who are probably not being in the team as long as the others, but they are also first team players. And then your other players are generally players who have only just come into the team. So if we look at social groups, you can see that in probably in a better format. The core social group, this group is made up of players who have been at the club roughly the same amount of time and are generally professional. That's good. We've got quite a professional squad. Then we've got players who um, most of the time share similar levels of professionalism, through which Lovren and Alexander-Arnold. I think when you start, it's usually Serbian speaking players. So you have Gruwich, Lovren, and possibly Clavin. Then you have our oh, Dutch players, De Ligt, Wijnaldum, and De Vrij. That's quite good to, to have, you know, these players who will gel well together. Next up, we have these ones who don't fit into any because they're new or simply they aren't getting. Oh, 
getting on, or gelling, sorry, getting, I don't know why I kept saying getting there, with the rest of the squad, which is, um, yeah, it can be worrying, but hopefully it's just a case of they need to bed into the team a lot more. The following recommended players have been scouted and are likely to fit in with the existing squad. It's quite good. We've got, you know, there's some advice here to say about for the, for the dynamics to try and fit into the squad. Happiness is something that it shows you the various different things that what makes them happy. So, Milner, management. Wow, it's gone up. And I'm trying to get rid of them. I don't. But as you can see, a lot of them are just satisfied. Maori, it's gone up as well. Other players, yeah, it's a new sign and is still establishing himself. Part of others. So that, yeah, it's just an explanation again of the different things. I could click on team meeting, but I'm not going to because I don't feel we need to do that. Next up that I want to talk about is the formation. So if I go to tactics, this is a 4-4-2 formation. I've always loved 4-4-2 formations and I've always wanted them to work in the various FMs. They don't seem to always work in FMs. There was one that was there um, I downloaded off the FM base website for FM 13, I think it was, called the Arigo Saki formation and that was unstoppable. And since then, 442 doesn't seem to work very well. However, in FM17, there was a fairly decent one that I downloaded off FM Scout, and this is basically it. And I've just pulled this off. I think it's called something like the Diego Simeone 442 formation, or the likes. Maybe I can see it here. Yeah, Diego Simeone's 442, and there is a 442 strikeless formation as well. Pretty sure when I tried to load it, I had to, um, I had to recreate it myself, or I thought I did. Obviously, it works on its own now, so that is quite good. Let's cancel that. So the, the actual formation itself is really pressing. Team instructions are here. So you've got higher tempo. Obviously, with a higher tempo, it gives you the opportunity to get. You know, to play the ball from back to front as quickly as possible. There is, um, we never take a breather. Rarely, we rarely waste time. Then you have the width. So Diego Simeone's players really cut the space in the middle. So they try and be a tight unit. And this is one of the things that helps that. We have slightly deeper. Which is, um, you know, it's... Again, it's all part of trying to be as defensively compact as possible and to let in as little goals as possible. Obviously, this says closing down sometimes, but I have, I'll show you the opposition instructions in a second, that I've got everyone basically closing down as much as possible. Prevent your goalkeeper distribution, that just means that we'll go and run after goalkeeper to try and stop him from passing it out to the defence. Then it is play out of defence. Obviously, we want to retain the possession and keep the ball, um, and then move it to the front as quickly as possible. Look for overlap. I think that's really something that is key to a four-four-two formation because you want your fullbacks bombing past your wingers, um, and then also if your fullbacks are in possession, you want your wingers to be up there and you know be an outlet so you can pass it up to them and cross the ball in. There is also work the ball into the box, so obviously we're not just going to shoot willy-nilly. We're going to try and get those goals um, without wasting chances. Dribble and run at defence, I mean, that's pretty good. If you've got wingers, you want them to really go for it. And then we've got we've not got room from posi positions because of the be more disciplined. So... There aren't many that don't just have the standard things. There is just the ball playing defenders have closed down much less because you want your back line to be obviously in a line. You have a sweeper keeper, so he takes long kicks. So obviously you want to go from back to front as quickly as possible. And then there is a distributor specific teammate as well. Just there's that. 
distribute them to to the number six by the looks of it. Which is Lovren in this case. Then we've got, we've got Tackle Harder sitting that away. Again, all parts of that. Diego Simeone theory of just condensing the space in the middle of the park. Just try and make things as difficult as possible for other teams to score. And similarly, over on the right, you've got a sit narrower as well. Tackle harder on one side and not on the other. I'm not sure about why that one's like that. Then the forward, just to make things a little bit different, you have one that has dribble more, which Salah is probably pretty good for that. I also have uh, other players in the team that can do that. But Salah, is, um, he got a couple of goals in the last game, so I may stick with him. We shall see. Another thing just before the game that I wanted to touch on is the medical centre. This is something that is very, very visual compared to how things have been in previous FMs. So for Liverpool, what, what I find quite funny is that we've got a few players who are made of glass. We've got Mane, Dembele, which is unfortunate because we've just signed him, Sturridge and Gomez, who's above average. So Sturridge, I think... I've had a couple of like mess arounds with the game. I had one game where I Sturridge come back and that very same day he went off injured again. He really is made of glass. If you touch him, he's going to shatter. It's just unfortunate because he's pretty good in the game. And he will bag your goals if you can keep him fit. So it is unfortunate. Risk assessment is basically the same thing ah okay i did think there was four different players so you got oxley chamberlain as well and then danny ings is high current injury is something that is really good so you can see the Vrie has got a dislocated jaw so it's got a red dot there for his face and damaged spine that's really bad so it's red there and then a torn thigh muscle so obviously it's red there injury history shows you Three league average is three, so it's not too bad. Two major, one moderate, obviously is fortunate. And then showing you like what different things they've got. So these are all, these are all really good. Zero percent, obviously, hundred percent missed so far. Nathaniel Klein and Lalana, with ninety-seven percent being Daniel Sturridge. Not good at all. Then let's see the. Quickly look at the schedule before we play the game. We have Hoffenheim at home in the best place playoff first leg. So I'm just in on this episode. I'm just going to play one game. Then in the next episode, what I might do is play Hoffenheim and then the Chelsea game. So yeah, it could be good for the second second video to have those two matches played. But without further ado, let's just get on there. Sure that I've got available tick, yes. So so we just change that to ports. One else. Milner I don't want to put on the bench because I want to get rid of him. Oxley Chamberlain is someone who could put on the bench. I think I'll just leave it for now. Go straight to the match. So we're playing a 4-4-2, they're playing a 3-2-2-1-2, or is it a 5-2-3? I don't know. 5-2-1-2 wing back is what the game is saying it is. If talk to the team, expect nothing but a win. So we've got excellence from Mane and Coutinho. Go to the tunnel. We've left Sturridge out. He's not ready to play. Blah, blah, blah. Can we expect an attack? We always try to attack where possible. And I'm going to skip this. I'm just going to turn the volume down slightly. So hopefully that is better. I just want it as a background rather than as the main source of sound. Henderson to Alberto. Go on Alberto, have a go. I'm going to cross it in. Mane, goal. Five minutes in. Already got our first goal. That's a good start. Great vision. Liverpool make a flying start. Get in there. So, Alexander-Arnold to Mane. 
Manny hits the defender, Henderson to Alberto, Alberto crosses it in and Manny just slots home, unmarked, poor defending from Hoffenheim. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention on the game is that I like the TV camera and also for the replays, the TV. If it's not as good for you guys or if you have a suggestion then just please let me know. Crowd sounds sound really loud still. Ah, that's because it's not affecting my volume. Oh, poor defending while I was messing about with the volume there. Wagner scored, and the old uh, Arsenal player crossed it in by the looks of it. Nick Gnabry. Kramerich passed it out to Zuba. Zubo, Zuba passed it in. Gnabry picked it up in the box and Wagner scores. Mignolet should have done better by the looks of it, but oh well. That was one of the other. Another thing that I was going to talk about. The match speed Jordan highlights is slightly faster, so obviously it plays through the time faster. But then the actual highlights I have fairly slow so that you can see the play. I think it just gives you a better visual. It's not too bad when you're watching it first hand like this, but once the actual replay comes through, I prefer it like that. To be fairly slow. Just so you know, you can see the ball. A oh, well won by Lovren there. Unfortunate that it didn't go to anyone. We need to get get in tighter against them. I forgot to have a look at the opposition instructions, which I may do in the next video. Oh my god, they nearly scored again. That was awful. I've just banged my mic. Oh, come on, Liverpool. We've only had one shot on target, which isn't good enough. We seem to be playing fairly decently, except for Alexander Arnold and the back two. Two centre backs, I should say. Zuba's had a yellow card. I give us a little shout and just encourage our players. I mean, the away goal is definitely worrying. I picked defensive set pieces for my match training because it said that these are really good in the air. So, oh my god. That's terrible. That is terrible. I might change that to be concentrate rather than encourage. Not good enough. Did it get a bit of luck? I wish my players could score goals like that. I think I'm going to give them a rollicking at half time. It's probably the best thing that I can do. Nobody's had better of Dejan Lovren in the air today. But that doesn't help me, does it? I've been. Oh my god, I would. How did that not go in? That was a brilliant bit of play. That's the other thing about this tactic that I really like is that it seems to be really good with the interplay between your players. So, come on, Manny. Oh. Firmino, Coutinho. Free kick. Oh, my tip was offside. So, it looks like my defenders are having a really bad time of things. But, hopefully... You know, as is in real life, the way Liverpool are playing at the moment. The defenders seem to be letting us down quite a lot. And that ball by Coutinho was awful. Even though he's just won it back. Oh, I thought Salah was going to have a tap in there. Come on. Oh, my God. I've left the, the corners as default. It's um, not something that I've really messed about with. I think people have worked out that if you do... I can't remember what it was. It was like two players on posts and one rushing in late and things like that. It works out better. But I think I need to just instruct Coutinho to not try and miss that first man. Just get it in the middle somewhere. Although Hoffenheim are really good in the air. So I don't know whether it's going to work, whether I mess about with it or not. And that's one of Liverpool's weaknesses is the jumping or heading. I don't know. Which. It says one or the other. Tremendous match. So I think I talked about it in my other Let's Play that I've got going. 
But this screen I really like. It shows you just quick snippets of the analysis. So we regained possession well in central areas, the middle third of the pitch. Good number of touches in the ball in the penalty area. That's not very good by the fact that we've only scored one goal, but okay. Lost a lot of possession in central areas of the middle of the third of the pitch. So we've kind of won it back and lost it. Same vein, which is uh, quite disconcerting. I'm going to tell them that it's um, not good enough. And hopefully that can get us to push on. Come on, Redman. I may have to make a change. Salah had a really good game in the against uh, Watford, but not playing too well this time round. Oh, <laughs> nearly went in. Nearly, nearly. Come on, Liverpool. We've had more possession, slightly more. I think Salah's coming off. And Jordan Henderson's struggling. Do I bring on Sturridge or Solanke? I think Sturridge is called for in this game. And then in the middle of the pitch, uh, I would like to play Gruwich, but I think just the experience of one Alden will be better for this one. Just because we're 2-1 down, they've got two away goals. Come on. To win the ball back up. Poor, poor defendant. Poor, poor, poor defender by Liverpool there. The right winger just seemed to ghost past our left back there. Well, heads it out, Emery. If anyone can, Emery can, can. Come on, let's go, let's get at them. We'll win that. Nope. We're letting them boss the midfield at the moment. It's just terrible. Yes, well done. Come on, Manny. Sturridge. Ball. Oh, I thought it was uh, going to be our turn to attack there. Hopefully we can get a good attack going. Yes, Alexander. Manny. Whip one in. No. Nope. Emery Khan. I don't know who that was to. Come on, Coutinho. Yes, one held them. Get in. That was a great goal. <laughs> and a nice little cartwheel to boot. So Emery Chan picks it up. Crosses it over to no one. North Face heads it out. Alberto to Coutinho. Coutinho hits it basically to no one. Then Coutinho plays it back to Wijnaldum and he slots one in on the edge of the area. It was a great goal. So two all, hopefully we can get a third and not concede another. And I'll be semi-happy about that. That was probably a, a good change by me. Oh, Coutinho. I'm counting my chickens too fast, aren't I? Count my chickens before they've hatched. That yours, that massive. Well, in Firmino, and Sturridge is away. He's away. Get in! Great goal, Sturridge. Great ball by Firmino. I think Solanke wouldn't have scored that one, but you never know. That was well played by Firmino in the middle of the pitch. And then a great ball. As I said, Daniel Sturridge, if you can keep... <laughs> He's made the glass, but if you can keep him fit, he will score your goals like that. That extra bit of pace is brilliant. And Dembele, I think, stupidly, or oh, I was having problems anyway with it, but stupidly, I didn't have him. Oh, no, he's ineligible. He must have played for Celtic in one of the other games. So, unfortunately, I couldn't do anything about that. So, I'm just going to hit it, hit concentrate here, if it'll let me. Just because I want us to um, see out the game now. Joe Gomez can play left back because Moreno's, well, not just Moreno's, quite a few of them are, who are looking unfit at the moment. So yeah, we'll bring on Gomez just to play the left back. Hopefully he can play well for us the last five minutes or so. 
I'll enchant. Just get rid of it. Don't mess about with it. That was well played, actually. Until we nearly lost it. Great ball to Mane. Storage. Oh, he's passed it out to Firmino. Can he do likewise? Oh, no, he can't. Oh, my God. That was a golden opportunity to put the game to bed there. At least the first leg. Those two away goals, they're still really stuck in my mind. It is just... Oh. Come on. Great challenge. And that should be it. Yes. Come on, Liverpool. First two proper games of the season, and we have won both games. We had 18 shots on tar and 7 on target. They had 7 on target too, but only 14 shots overall. Moreno was our best player. Salah was our worst. Yeah, I... What can I say? I did like to come back though. Well, you've done brilliant to come back and win that. I'm proud of you. Get some good, positive um, emotions from people there. And... Oh, send assistance. And what I'll do just to finish off this episode is I will, Rawi Tactics, show the opposition instructions. This is something that is part and parcel of the um, of the suggested for or the um, these are the suggested opposition instructions for that, that formation. Well, I've just noticed is that this episode has gone on for far too long because of that because I was talking for quite a bit at the start. So as I said. Next episode is going to be Hoffenheim, the return leg. That's away from home. Hopefully, if we snatch a goal, it means that they need at least, oh no, they two will do them as well. So, we need to make sure if we can keep a clean sheet, obviously, that's happy days. That's all we need to do, but you just never know. And then the Chelsea match as well, which hopefully we can beat them. It's at home and televised, so hopefully give the fans something to shout about at home and in the uh, in the stadium. So thank you very f very much for watching. Um, if you like the video, please hit like and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.